Hey internet, Eric here. Um, still October, still doing uh, horror movies I've never seen. Now this one technically I have seen. Um, this I just watched it for my second time, but the first time I watched it was, God, over a decade ago. You know what I mean? So I honestly remembered nothing, so I'm going to say this counts. Uh, and uh, this is going to be actually an Is It Worth the Hype video. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's every now and then I'll pick a movie that critics loved, fans loved, both, you know, stuff like that. You know, they, they praise the movie and I want to see, is it worth all the hype that it's getting? You know, is it that great, you know, or, or is it just overhyped? Let's get to it. I am today, I'm talking about from 1980, John Carpenter's The Fog. That's right. This is the technically second, but I'm going to say first time since I remember jack shit watching John Carpenter's The Fog. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, what have you. Basic plot of this is we're at a small town on the Bay, the Bay Area. And we, it's, I believe, the is the bicentennial, the 100-year anniversary type of thing of the founding of the town. And we find out from the very beginning that the town was founded because the town founders tricked some pirates into crashing their boat onto the shore because they were afraid the, the pirates had leprosy. We took the pirates' gold funded the town with that gold, and now the pirates are back for revenge. You know, pretty simple. Um, going into this, I knew lots of fans are saying this is one of John Carpenter's best films, yada, yada, yada. You know, other than Halloween, a lot of people put this up there. At least in the circles, I, I don't want to say traveling, but the people I, I usually talk movies in general with. Um, let's get to it. I, I'll tell you more what I think. Is it worth the hype? We'll get to that in a second. The acting. He's got a great cast. Tom Atkins, always great. Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, this was like a big year for her in 1980. She did this. She did Prom Night. She did Terror Train. I think she's better in Terror Train. I remember hating Prom Night. She's pretty good in this. You know, she's got some good chemistry with Tom Atkins. You know, he's playing, I don't know, is he a detective or something? Anyway, she's a hitchhiker. She... You know, she gets picked up by him, they bang, you know, because it's fucking Tom Atkins. No women can resist him, even though he doesn't have the mustache in this one. She's fine. She's nothing special. Janet Lee, she's she's fine in this movie. Um, the lead of this is Adrian Barbeau, though. And uh, Adrian Barbeau, she plays the, the disc jockey. She owns the radio station. The radio station is in a lighthouse. And um, she's great. Um, she, first off, she's, <laughs> it's Adrian Barbeau. It's 1980, Adrian Barbosa. You cannot take your eyes off the screen when you watch this woman. And uh, she's got one of those voices. She's perfect for a DJ. Like, I would, would listen to this woman read a phone book. You know what I mean? Sing old McDonald. I don't care. And, um, I mean, she's got such a great voice. That's why she's, you know, a voice cameo in the thing. But she's really, really good. She's got great chemistry when she's by herself, you know, just trying to, you know, solve the mystery, get people to safety and stuff like that. But she's got great chemistry with the cast. Who else is in this? Uh, Hal Holbrook as a, as the priest. Again, really, really good. The acting. Uh, who else is in this? Oh, my God. Adrian Barbeau, Jamie Lee Curtis, John Houseman. He's he's good. Uh, Janet Lee, Hal Holbrook. So, fantastic cast. They're not always given a lot to do. Uh, what's her name? Annie Loomis. Or Nancy Loomis, who plays Annie from Halloween. She's in this movie. She's pretty good, too. Um, there's little... Screen time for more than two group, uh, like two people on screen at a time. Like it's Tom Atkins and Jamie Lee Curtis, Nancy Loomis and Janet Lee. Adrian Barbeau is usually by herself, so they they're great together in those little groups. And then when they finally come together in the climax, they're really really good. Um, uh, the score in this so good, so creepy. Like this is perhaps if you take Halloween out of it, this is probably my favorite. John Carpenter's score. Maybe knocking out Prince of Darkness, in my opinion. So good, so creepy, so atmospheric. What I really like about John Carpenter's in this one is the use of the fog. You know, when the, when the pirates, they're coming back. Um, they, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a character in itself. It creeps in, comes out of nowhere, and it looks great. The way it's backlit, the way it works in the darkness. Um... I just love that overending sense of dread when that mist, or not the mist, when that fog comes into frame. Um, what else? Uh, the gore, 
it's it's decent we get some stabbings here and there um dead bodies look good stuff like that um but it's not overly violent in my opinion i don't know why this was rated r i really don't um let's see here the pirate ghost though this is where we get to the problem um they look pretty bad uh let's see here you don't have a picture of them here and i'm not going to pull the, the the other side out the other what you call cover art um it's just dudes in a suit covered in seaweed with swords and sickles and glowing red eyes they're very generic looking they're kind of spooky from a distance they look terrifying in the fog but when they're up close and personal it's just like <laughs> i guess i'm afraid of a pirate ghost you know what i mean um and then <laughs> one thing I, I i can't let slide you know this, you know they're terrifying when they're trying to break in the house when they're trying to break in the in the uh church at the end but there's a scene where tom atkins and jamie lee curtis the, you know they're they're lying in bed and they hear a knock at the door and another knock at the door and it's the fucking pirate ghost he's literally knocking at the door trying to get in hoping someone will open it up and then you know take them out it just walks away because no one opens the door what the fuck is the deal with that that had me eye rolling that was really really fucking dumb um climax of this movie is great everyone's in the church trying to fight off the pirate ghost um i love when adrian barbeau is on top of the lighthouse you know trying to get away with them she gets a, a sickle into the chest and the thing is i liked the ending the ending was pretty good they have to get six victims because i believe there were six pirates killed in the crash so what it was is the founders of the eventual founders of the town we're worried about leprosy, like I said, with the with the pirates. So they tricked them, but they knew they had gold uh, on the on the pirate ship. Um, so they tricked them into crashing their boat so they could steal the gold. What they did was they made a fire on the beach so they would think that that's the lighthouse light, and so they were following the fire and then poosh, it happened. So seven people died. And uh, the town was founded, so they need seven bodies, six or seven bodies to make it even. You know what I mean? Um, love the ending. We think, you know, <laughs> you know, they get the gold. We think everyone's safe until that type of ending. Really, really liked it. Um, I love the scene where Tom Atkins is trying is rescuing Adrian Barbeau's son. Great action. He punches down the door, pulls the kid out right in the nick of time type of stuff. Uh, lots of lots of great stuff in this. Um, is the fog like critics i was surprised critics gave this like a 70 percent on rotten tomatoes and it's it's like a three and a half out of five on imdb um but the fans the fans are the ones that hyped this one up for me completely worth the hype i had a lot of fun with this one i love the score like i said um the mood the atmosphere the look of the fog itself the town it's this really small creepy town to begin with um i like how uh the actors interact with each other when they're just in these groups i like how they are together at the end you know as one big group um great action um pirate ghost though they look like see that looks spooky that looks spooky they look dumb as shit when you when they get close type of thing and there's no forgiving the, the no one's home let's leave type of bit but overall i really like this one so good so if you haven't seen this i probably spoiled it for you but i warned you at the beginning is this one worth the hype at least from the horror community or the horror community members that i hang out with absolutely um frenzy and i did a john carpenter top 10 oh god video long time ago it's in the the short rounds playlist feel free to check that one out and uh this one was not on my top five because of I'd never seen it. Definitely would go on my top five now. Um, Halloween didn't make my top five. This would. So I think this is better and more entertaining than Halloween. If you don't like it, fight me. Don't care. Um, but highly recommend The Fog if you haven't seen it. And honestly, now I'm actually inspired to go see if the remake is worth the hate. You know, because... Sorry, horror community, lots of times, they just hate remakes because they're remakes. I'm going to give it a shot. 
I've seen it once, fell asleep in the theaters. Not a good sign, but fuck it. This has inspired me to see the remake, and I'll be the judge of it because it's my time being used to watch a movie. Anyways, off my soapbox. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. Comment below. Have you seen it? If you like it, where would you put it with John Carpenter's, uh, in your own top five John Carpenter's? Still got some stuff planned for the rest of October. It's going to be a lot of fun um, with what I have planned. I'm not going to announce it anymore because who knows what I'll get out in time. But with that, uh, don't know what else to say. Cheers.